Welcome back to So This Is Thailand. Coming up right now is our section on expert advice, and today we have a topic that many expats and foreigners working in Thailand I know have some confusion about, and that is work permits. Joining me is our expert advisor today, Kun Perodon Suchiwa, who is the legal director of RSM Advisory Thailand. Welcome to the show. Thank you, Joan. Well, I know this is a subject that causes a lot of expats a lot of headache. Yep. First question right off the bat, do you need a work permit whether you're doing part-time or full-time or is there any general clause? Uh -huh. If you are foreigners, you need to have a work permit, no matter you uh, work without paid, get paid, getting paid or not. So whether I'm working part-time, full-time or even volunteer work, yes. I have to have as a work permit. As long as you are considered as working in Thailand, you need to have a work permit. So that pretty much says, unless you're here on vacation, you need a work permit. Uh, no, if, you, if you're on vacation, you, <laughs> you don't, you know don't need one. to have a work permit. <laughs> yeah. Now, the work permits, are they industry specific? Uh, you have to follow the, the scope of work that state on your work permit. Then you cannot work beyond that scope of service. So let's say I'm, I'm in a logistics company. Uh -huh. I have to maintain my, my employment within logistics only. With that company only as well. With that company, yeah. with that specific company. With that specific company. You cannot work for other companies. Oh, so if I change my employer, but mm -hmm. still in the same industry, I have, must reapply for the work permit. You have to cancel your existing work permit and reapply for a new one. Oh. Now, does that also pertain to the location of the business? Uh, yes, definitely. Uh, normally, your work permit will indicate the, the location of your work, for instance, Bangkok. Uh, which means that you cannot work outside Bangkok. If you do work outside Bangkok, you need to get your work permit endorsed to add your place of uh, business or work on your work permit. So even if I got transferred within the same company, mm -hmm. they would have to amend my work permit to yes. include you, that new location? Yes, you should recommend your company to register a branch uh, in, that con uh, in that province, and then you should add your work permit, your place of work on your work permit. Well, I know there's a, there's a couple different questions that stem from this. Number yeah. one, if I'm, I indeed do uh, work in an outlying province outside of Bangkok or I switch offices, is there a visa or immigration office in every province that I can go to or do I have to come uh, back to, Thai, or to Bangkok? Most of provinces in, in Thailand, they do have the immigration office. And then you can uh, submit your visa application or visa extension there. Okay. Not only in Bangkok. To avoid some headache, I know some people might be thinking, wow, that's, that's a lot of work to have to constantly change if indeed my, my profession requires me to. Is it possible from the beginning to register your work permit with more than one, let's say, company or profession in more than one location? Uh, yes, you can. You just have, is there, just have to state that when you apply for it? Yep, when you apply for it. Well, how about this? Can you step us through the, the what's the basic mm -hmm. process for getting a work permit? Uh, before you can apply for a work permit, you must uh, obtain the visa called non-immigrant category B or business visa with, where you can apply uh, from the Thai embassy overseas. And normally the Thai embassy will grant you 90 days visa uh, with single entry permit. And once you come back to Thailand, then uh, you can apply for a work permit and then renew your visa up to one year and also apply for a re-entry permit. So, can you repeat that one more day? One, one more time? Yeah. So, 90 days. 90 days visa will be granted by the Thai embassy overseas. And for a single entry? For a single entry. Most of the embassy will, will grant you only single entry. And during that time, then you're able to... And once you come back to Thailand, then you can start applying for a work permit, which will take approximately 14 days. And you must wait bef until you obtain the actual work permit before you can begin employment? Uh, not really. After you submit the work permit application, maybe you can start working with your company. Doesn't seem too hard, I guess. Uh, not really. In terms of the, you mentioned it's a 90-day non-immigrant B visa. Let's say, for example, mm -hmm. I'm here on vacation. I happen to find that I, want, I enjoy it. I want to stay here. I want to work here. Do I have to exit Thailand and come back in to get that non bit uh, You have two options. The first one is you may leave the country and then apply for a new non-immigrant B visa from the Thai embassy overseas and come back with the business visa. Or 
we can convert your visa from the tourist to be the non-immigrant B visa. And this can in, help in Thailand, subject to certain conditions, like you need to have uh, at least 21 day valid visa. And this can all be done at the immigration office? can be done at the immigration office with a supporting document from your employer. Okay. Are there any restricted industries or professions that foreigners are, are barred from, from working Yes, in? there are numbers of you know, prohibited uh, professions or careers for foreigners. For instance, lawyer or legal advisor. You cannot, you cannot be a legal advisor if you are a foreigner, or you cannot be a farmer, or you cannot uh, carry on any business in agriculture business area. Well, it makes sense. I know Thailand wants to protect especially those core industries Correct. for the country. Correct. If I want to find out more information about work permits, immigration, any of the forms that I might yep. need, where can I go and look? Uh, for the work permit, you can check out the website of the Department of Employment, Ministry of Labor. Uh, their website is worldwideweb.doe.go.th. And for the visa information, you may access the website of the Immigration Bureau of Thailand. Their website is worldwideweb.immigration.go.th. And all this information is available in English? Most of information will be available in English. Oh, yeah. excellent. Now, I know for, for everyone watching, a real big point of contention is this 90-day reporting. A lot of foreigners believe they have to actually go to the immigration office, take a day out of work, go report, renew. Is this actually the case? Uh, no, that's not true. Because you don't have to show up to do a 90-day report mm -hmm. at the immigration office. Uh, you can ask your staff or even messenger to, to do this 90-day report on your behalf at the immigration office. You just have to make sure that you can just sign the 90-day report form and just pass the form and your original passport to your staff and then they can bring your stuff to the immigration and get the report done for you. Very easy. It's pretty easy and take less than one hour, of course. Well, excellent. Well, last question for today and something that is a very kind of a very serious topic I know here in Thailand. It's those foreigners who are actually working here without a, uh, without a work uh, permit. Oh, they will be in a big trouble because if you are a foreigner and you work without having a work permit, you will be subject to penalty, uh, imprisonment penalty up to five years and the fine penalty up to 100,000 baht. And on top of that, the employer will also have a problem. The, f the employer will also get fined? Yes. Uh, if you employ a foreigner who has no work permit, then the company or the employer will be subject to the penalty, fire penalty up to 100,000 baht. Well, it's a very good deterrent for having illegal workers. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> Well, Kun Paradon, thank you very much for joining us today, and hopefully that helps clear up some of the confusion around work permits. We have a lot more coming on So This is Thailand, so don't go away. Today, we're finding out about the food at Koh Kret, um, which is not only delicious, but it's full of history too. Because what happened about a century ago was uh, the king at the time, King Rama V, came here and the royal chef needed help preparing the food for the king and for the royal household. So what he did, he got a lot of the villagers around and instructed them how to make food that was fit for a king. And this tradition has passed down through the generations. And now we see here this incredible array of royal Thai dessert. Most of the people in Gok Ret Amon tribe that are still very strict in their tradition and culture. Gok Ret is famous for its pottery and the traditional Thai desserts. In the past, Rama V visited this island. The royal chef needed people to help in the kitchen. So they trained people on this island how to cook like the royal chef. That's how people on Gok Ret know traditional Thai royal culinary 
and they have passed it down generation to generation, which still continues until now. Okay, so this one is called Jo Mongkut, and this one is named after Rama V, King Rama V, yes? So why don't you give that one a try? Oh, it looks looks like a little crown, isn't it? It's got gold, jewels. Yeah, is it nice? <laughs> It's got, it's got jewels on the top. Should we try? I'll try a bit. Okay, I'll try the king's dessert. Okay. Food fit for a king. Mm. Okay. And then what's what's this one called, please? Tong yot. Tong yot. Tong yot. Should we try this one, Stella? Why don't you have a little? Bit I wonder of that what one? that is. I wonder what the fruit Just is. Just try one little piece. Yeah. Okay. Try that. Can I try one? Uh huh. Yeah. Is it very sweet? Yeah. Very sweet. Wow. But nice. It's good. Okay. Now here we are at a stall on Gokred, selling some of these famous Thai fish cakes that I talked to you about earlier. They're made from Norgala, and you take them here, and you dip it in the chili sauce, and you try it. Absolutely delicious. Anik, I like it. Okay, so this is cucumber. This is sort of deep fried cucumber. Let me try this. Wow, crunchy. Yeah, crunchy and good. It's kind of like... Tempura. Is it like yeah, Japanese it, tempura? It's, it's almost like Japanese tempura. Yeah. Now this is Thai tempura. It's excellent. Yeah. It's good. It's nice. Do you want yeah. to try, Scarlett? Do you want to try? Try it. What do you think? Mm. Yeah, quite yeah, nice, you huh? like it? Good. Okay. Well, now here on Gokred, there's a strong culinary tradition. They produce fantastic food here. Now, we all love Thai food. We love Thai green curry, chicken and cashew nuts, all that good stuff. But here on Gokred, one of the specialities are Thai fish cakes, known as Tortman Pla, one of my particular favorites. I really love them. Now, you guys, I think you know something about Thai desserts that they produce here. So if you go to the, uh, the stalls around the, the island, you'll see lots of uh, small sweets. And these are uh, one of the traditional traditional recipes that have been passed down from uh, Rama V's visit. Uh, very sweet, very tasty. What kind of desserts do you like, Scarlett? Well, my favourite desserts are like bananas and coconut Oh, milk. yummy. Yes, and I also like these green worm jelly things. Yes. They're, they're very nice in milk. Well, lots of people say they look disgusting, but they... they they are actually quite nice. It tastes like jelly. 